Namaste, Manakkam, Swagatam, Buongiorno, Good morning wherever you are, or good evening, or good night, and in the different parts of the world. It's always wonderful when we can get up in the morning. You can hear the birds chirping away. At least the birds are happy about the situation, even if we humans are quite miserable. You can hear them chirping away to glory. Been a long time since we have had birds chirping like this. The clear skies, the cool evenings and even the mornings. I was just out for a short cycling to get some milk and curd for later today. And I was just thinking how blessed we are as a human being with the power of choice. This power of choice is the most important attribute that differentiates us from other living beings. Other living beings are bound by instinct, but we have intuition. We have the ability to choose. And there are so many of you out there doing wonderful work. Farzana, for example, really, really, you are doing wonderful work. A very big round of applause to the message you are taking to people of health and how, you know, through conscious living, the person can change their life. It's really wonderful to see so many of my dear ones in the IAYT family, the IYTA family, the Indian Yoga Association family, and my Geetananda family all over the world. All of them doing such wonderful work. I was watching a beautiful session by Rajvi Mehta for the PGA Chandigarh group yesterday. Very beautiful to see it. Listening to my dear Matthew Taylor, listening to Timothy yesterday on the Health Flix, participating in Health Flix. Uh, really wonderful to see all the excellent work. And Amy Wheeler, you are doing an amazing job there, transforming lives through the work you are doing. So many of you. And uh, it's, it's just wonderful to see it. And we are hoping that uh, we can make some of these uh, sessions a bit more, um, you know, scheduled so that people can log in and log off at the times that we can give them. So stay posted for that. And for those of you who have been with me for the last few days, we have been working on the concept of Sukha Purvaka Pranayama. A very important pranayama in Swamiji's teachings. So let's invoke the Guru Parampara, the great masters of not just our tradition, but all traditions who have given us this beautiful gift of yoga. The gift of yoga that enables us to manifest our humanity. Join me for the prayer to the Guru Parampara, all the master teachers of all the lineages. Om Tad Param Paryaya Vedmahe Jnana Lingheshwaraya Dhimahe Tanno Guru Prachodayate Om Om Yoga Mahasri Dr. Swami Gita Ananda Giri Guru Maharaj Ki Jai We have been looking at the concept of Sukha Purvaka Pranayama, one of the very important foundational practices of the Gita Nanda teachings. And this is a four part breath for those who have not been to these sessions before. Uh, I see that my American mom Doris is online and so many of my dear friends. Nice to see you all. Sukha Purvaka is four part breath. Sukha Pranayama is the first component where we breathe in and we breathe out for an equal count. Throughout the practice, it's going to be equal counts. No unequal ratios in this practice. So we breathe in and we breathe out. That is the first part, Sukha Pranayama. The second component 
is called loma l o m a loma which means with the flow you can talk about it like an agonist Yeah. In uh, science, we talk about agonist, antagonist. Agonist that goes in one direction. For example, the biceps are the agonist that help you contract, you know, bend your uh, arm like this. So this is the agonist. Whereas the triceps are the antagonist that do the opposite. They help you extend the arm. So this is the agonist. This is the antagonist for this action. It's not that the bicep is always the agonist. When I want to stretch my arm, the bicep is now the antagonist. The tricep is the agonist. So it's constantly changing. It's constantly in flux. That is what life's all about. It's about constant change, constant transformation, and evolution. And that is why even the actual definition of evolution is the change in the genomic structure. We think about evolution in many other ways, but actually. mutation itself may be part of evolution one of the most important evolutionary aspects so coming back agonist antagonist similarly loma which is with the flow okay so with the flow what we do is that we breathe in we hold the breath and we breathe out so i was telling you yesterday about the mental images that come up the mental metaphors the the beautiful imagery that can come up with this So with the sukha, we have it's as if it's a parallel line because you breathe in, you breathe out. So you can think about it as just a either as a line or parallel line. Breathe in, breathe out. You know something like this: breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. It's it's like a parallel line going up and down. Okay, that's like the mental image, like a highway. Now, in India, you're supposed to travel on the left and then you come back on the right. Uh, well. most of the time we drive as if we are in europe so we are on the right and the left and i never know which direction we are driving but we are supposed to go on one side come on the other similarly the mental image is this for sukha but in loma the second component of the sukha pravaka you breathe in you hold in and you breathe out so it is like an equilateral triangle with the apex down so it's in hold out in hold out are you getting that triangular mental image in your mind good so the mental image is of a downward pointing triangle in the loma pranayama the so this is called converse then you have what is called the inverse pranayama which is the viloma v i l o m a which means the opposite of the loma Okay, so here you have loma and viloma. The viloma component is where you breathe in, you breathe out, and then you hold out. So, if you want to think of this in a mental image, it's like you breathe in, you breathe out, and you hold out. Breathe in, breathe out, hold out. Breathe in, breathe out, hold out. So now you have an upward pointing triangle. In the loma, you had a downward pointing triangle. In the viloma, you have an upward pointing triangle with the apex up. Okay, this is the mental image you have. So you have two triangles: the loma triangle with the apex pointing down, the viloma triangle with the apex pointing up. Then comes the fourth component, which is the complete practice, where all the three previous components are brought together. So here you have breathe in, hold. Breathe out, hold. Breathe in, hold. Breathe out, hold. Breathe in, hold. Breathe out, hold. And presto, you have a square. So the square becomes the mental image. It becomes the mandala for the sukha purvaka. So you can think of the mandalas, the four geometric shapes. These are archetypal. shapes and symbols that go right down into our con the subconscious unconscious uh, so much has been talked about this by especially people like young they have talked about the collective unconscious and the power of you know the archetypes the primitive archetypes the mandalas are like primitive archetypes so this is not just a breathing exercise and i think if one thing really gets my goat 
it is when people call pranayama breathing exercises breathing exercises are chalk pranayama is the best cheese you can have you know the cheese is best when it gets older well pranayama is so old it is the best cheese i'm not talking about wine i'm talking about cheese so you have chalk and cheese breathing exercises are just it's just physical practices in pranayama you are working with prana you are working with energy you are working with that enhancement of your capacity to experience energy you are not expanding the energy the energy is already there it is very expansive you are expanding your capacity to experience it that is it's a big transformation from breathing exercise to pranayama okay so anyway coming back i see a lot of my australian family down under online namaste to all of you and welcome to the session coming back the first image parallel lines the second image a downward pointing triangle for the loma the third image an upward pointing triangle for the viloma and the fourth image a square for the sukha purvaka now you know let's just take that loma in viloma it is a very interesting component when you think of loma viloma because you have a downward pointing triangle and upward pointing triangle what is this downward pointing triangle the downward pointing triangle is actually the mandala for the fire element and is related to the manipura chakra so the manipura is where we are working when we are working with the loma component when we are working with the viloma component what are we doing we are coming up into the heart center and what is happening is because the viloma comes after loma not only is it an upward pointing uh triangle here the previous triangle gets superimposed on it and so you have a downward pointing and an upward pointing triangle both superimposed on each other and presto what is the image that comes a six pointed star that is the symbol of lord muruga the young god of south indian culture is also the star of david it is a energy related to the heart center the anahata and what is the square anyone who's been into this type of work understands that the square is the prithvi mandala it is the mandala of the earth and related to mooladhara so in fact when we are doing these practices of the sukha purvaka we are actually working even if you don't know it now if you know it it's even better see doing something unconsciously is okay but when you start to do it consciously that is where the spinal cord mentality has shifted up into a cerebral cortical ability i'm not even going to use the word mentality it's an ability it's a capacity so what are we doing when we do these practices we are working with these lower centers and what is the swadishtana it is the water element it is the moon crescent moon and what is the crescent moon it's a just an in and out an in and out so you remember that parallel line of the sukha pranayama well that is related to that the second component so all the four components of sukha purvaka are not just working with the breath they are not just expanding your chest or your breathing capacity they are doing that yes but that is the chalk component, cheese component the best component the most ancient tasty component of the essence is that you are working with the muladhara swadhisthana manipura and anahata these four centers are being worked when you work in the sukha purvaka prania so please do not ever at least in my presence or on my facebook page or in emails to be called pranayama as breathing exercises huh? it's like saying the yogic exercises what what can be worse so demeaning at least say yogic techniques or the yoga practices because you are constantly practicing as a doctor what do we do we have a medical practice because we are never perfect so we keep on practicing and practicing and practicing hoping one day we'll be perfect it is the same with the yoga you are constantly practicing 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 until one day you are perfect you know how you get to be perfect and that's a very loaded word perfect 
but my beloved amma ji so wonderfully some time back was talking about dhyanam or meditation and she said you know nobody is perfect nobody is perfect in the state of meditation and again meditation is a state it is not something you do okay in the state of meditation in the state of dhyana you become nobody i'm going to repeat that nobody is perfect in the state of meditation and dhyana you become nobody and when you become nobody you are that perfectness itself so the constant practice of yoga is what we are working on so let's now work on this sukha purvaka pranayama we'll do three rounds of each component and then after that go in for our synchronized global prayer hmm? i i just love this image with all those coconut palms behind me it looks like a nice aura behind me huh? my own natural aura huh? blessing me from right behind so join me as we go on with the sukha purvaka breathing out breathing in 2 3 4 5 6 Breathe out, two, three, four, five, six. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, six. Breathe out, two, three, four, five, six. Breathe in, two, three, four, five, six. Breathe out, two, three, four. Five, six. Now let's do the second component, the loma pranayama. Remember, the shape of the loma is that downward pointing triangle, the symbol of the mani pura. Breathe out. Breathe in. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three, four. Five, six, out, two, three, four, five, six, in, two, three, four, five, six, hold, two, three, four, five, six, out, two, three, four, five, six, in, two, three. Four, five, six. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six. Out. Two, three, four, five, six. Coming into the viloma. The viloma is that upward pointing triangle. Breathe out. Breathe in. Two. Three, four, five, six. Out. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six. In. Two, three, four, five, six. Out. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six. In. Two, three, four, five, six. Out. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. Two, three, four, five, six. Now let's perform the Sukha Purvaka. the final part of this four part practice and the mental image is of this beautiful square that shape associated with the earth element and the muladhara breathing out breathe in 2 3 4 5 6 hold 2 3 4 5 6 out Two, three, four, five, six. Hold. 
two, three, four, five, six. In two, three, four, five, six. Hold two, three, four, five, six. Out two, three, four, five, six. Hold two, three, four, five, six. In two, three, four, five, six. Hold two, three, four, five, six. Out two, three, four, five, six. Hold two, three, four, five, six. Just sit quietly contemplating the beautiful energies that you have evoked from within when we perform the pranayama we are making our mind fit for the deeper aspects of yoga starting with dharana or concentration when we are doing the sukha pranayama we are working with a pattern that is related to the Swadhisthana Chakra, that beautiful crescent moon related to the water element, that fluidity is brought into our nature. When we work with the Loma Pranayama, the Tejas or Agni Mandala, the downward pointing triangle of Manipura is brought into play, enabling us to light the fire of our passion, motivation, and the deep connection with our own solar nature, a solar being in the solar system. When we work on the Viloma, we are working on the Vayu Mandala, the air element related to the heart center, the Anahata, developing beautiful compassion, empathy, and understanding for ourselves and for others around us. And when we work on the final part of the Sukha Purvaka Pranayama, a beautiful square shape, that square shape is brought into our consciousness, stability, solidarity, cohesiveness becomes part and parcel of our nature. All the four lower centers, Muladhara, Swadhisthana, Manipura, Nanahata, are brought into our consciousness when we perform the Sukha Purvaka. And that is why it is such a stabilizing foundational practice to keep us grounded. Grounding is vital if we are not to blow our fuse. We need to be connected. And what better connection than to our own inner self? Gently rub your palms together, generating some nice heat. Place them over your hand, eyes, the forehead, the head. Coming out of this short contemplative practice of Sukha Purvaka Pranayama, I will be back in a few seconds. And we will go in for the synchronized global prayer. It's wonderful to see all my dear ones there with me. Rajivji, such a pleasure to have you watching. We have Dilip Sarkarji, my dada, my big dada of yoga therapy with me, my dear Dr. Meena, uh, Priya, Shruti, it's nice to see all of you. I see also my dear, dear Amba, uh, I see... Oh my God, so many of you, Giri Raj and all, really, really, my love to each and every one of you. We are at a time in human history that history is going to look back, is going to actually look back and judge us. As the Queen was saying in her address, such a dignified address, I was watching it last night. We are going to be judged whether we raised ourselves to face the challenge or not. At least 
let us as a yoga community come together and use this challenge as an opportunity for transformation yoga is all about transformation and if it doesn't transform us as an individual and if it doesn't enable us to transform the world in which we live then i do question whether it is yoga yoga is not just an exercise it is a lifestyle it is an attitude it is the principle of transformation let us be the agent of the change we want to see in the world as the great mahatma said be the change we want to see in the world the change starts from within we'll be back in a few moments to do the synchronized global prayer of the indian yoga association check in with me in maybe 2 minutes namaste <laughs>